Greetings from New York. As you say, there are hundreds of protests going on all around the world today as young people, school children from Australia to Iceland come together to protest about what they're calling the crisis of their lifetime. Climate change, of course, and what they see is politicians' inability or unwillingness to do anything about it. On a hot September day, a warming planet dominates the agenda. We are the generation that will save this planet. One generation, the youngest, now leading others before it, demanding urgent action to curb carbon emissions, the so-called die-in staged to warn of what might happen otherwise. There are thousands here today, but hundreds of thousands, even millions, adding their voices elsewhere. And the scale of this global protest, especially the number of young people involved, gives you a clear indication of their growing sense of urgency when it comes to the issue of climate change. Some of the day's first global climate strike protests happened in Australia, where an estimated 300,000 gathered at more than 100 rallies. From Melbourne... Sydney. This isn't a fringe movement, this isn't a greenie issue, this isn't a lefty issue, this is a human issue. World leaders were vilified over their climate change credentials. In New Delhi and India, as elsewhere, from India to Indonesia, the scale and reach of this protest surely unprecedented. This was the scene in Nairobi in Kenya. Climate change is real and it's coming for us and it doesn't matter who you are. Whether you are rich or poor, this thing is real. They protested in Manila, in Bangkok. We're skipping school because the teachers teach us how to work in the future. But if we don't do this, there'll be no future for us to work in. And Hong Kong. <laughs> Even in Kabul, in Afghanistan, they marched under the shadow of the gun. Their message, if war doesn't kill them, climate change will. For those on the front line of rising sea levels in the Pacific Islands came some of the day's most poignant images. And in Germany and Berlin came the most shocking, the melting blocks of ice beneath the gallows, a striking symbol of protest. Europe's capital cities saw some of the biggest crowds take to the streets, echoing to calls for governments to address climate change with far greater urgency. Back in the UK, office workers joined students in the protest. 100,000 gathered in London claimed organisers. One cabinet minister said he couldn't endorse children leaving school for this, but said their voices were being heard. The Labour leader called them an inspiration. And to those who say that school students and college students should be in college today, I say thank you for being here, for teaching me and everybody else a lesson about the environment. From Brighton to Belfast, Cambridge to Cardiff, the UK Student Climate Network claimed more than 200 events had been organised today to raise the alarm for the climate, they said. on the streets of London today than I have ever seen in the Palace of Westminster. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you are not making a difference. You are making history. From a city in France to thousands marching in Rome, to our very own demonstrations in Cape Town and Pretoria. Children have come together to try and save the planet themselves. 16-year-old Greta Thunberg, who inspired her peers across the world with her protest in Sweden, was this week nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. We need change! We need change! These young activists say climate change will have a huge impact on their lives if nothing is done. 
I really want climate change to be something that politicians are discussing leading up to the elections and I feel like we haven't really seen people talking about it a lot. If we don't do this and take a stand now, there won't be a future. We want the political um, system to just um, take action because uh, like right now we don't really see they're not really prioritizing this. In my poster I have said what world will my grandchildren be living in as and if we don't do anything soon then the gra my grandchildren might be having terrible lives with not the luxury that we have and all the nature and animals. I think that here in South Africa we all do need to start banning single-use plastics. Now the hope of South Africa's so-called climate kids is to get government to act and reduce waste, pollution and the dependency on non-renewable energy. Hiladi Satusa, Parliament. To development and food security. He mentioned the drought in the Western Cape and heavy storms in some parts of Gauteng, the Northwest and other places as signs of the ongoing dangers of climate change. Manolise Dubase reports. The president issued this warning during his reply to the State of the Nation debate. If we are a country that prioritizes the interests of the poor and the vulnerable, then we need to act with greater urgency to respond to the effects of climate change and make our contribution in preventing it. The rural poor are most affected by climate change change ravages. He warned that climate change is the single biggest threat to development and food security. Unless we tackle climate change, we will not be able to meet our developmental objectives. We have ratified the Paris Agreement to combat climate change as part of the global effort to dramatically reduce the rate of global warming.